But we are expecting to hear from the Ashanti Regional Coordinator, who uh, we understand has uh, arrived and is taking his oath. I shall give before this committee. Shall be the whole truth. Nothing but the truth. So help me, Doc, please, can you give your full name again to the committee? My name is Dr. Mensa Manye. Is it M-A-N-Y-E? My name is Dr. Mensa Manye. Can you spell the Manye, please? M-A-N-Y-E. Please, where do you work? Which hospital? Edra Government Hospital. Please, what's your designation at the hospital? Your position? Yeah, I'm the medical superintendent of the hospital. Can you tell the committee how long you've been there as a doctor? Six years ago. Is, do you have any specialization as a doctor? No, I'm a general practitioner. Do you live at Ejira? Yes. So, as a resident, in your estimation, how would you describe the general nature of the town in relation to security? The atmosphere of the town in relation to security is quite threatening. So, were you at Ejira on the 29th of June this year, 2021? Yes. I believe as a hospital, by all means, you would have several patients in a day. But uh, I'm going to ask you this question in special reference to patients who were brought there as a result of some shooting in a jura on the 29th. Please tell the committee if you have any information on these patients in relation to this incident. Thank you. On the 29th June 2021, around 12 p.m. was preparing to go for an operation or CS. A group of nurses rushed to me in the theater. Okay. that some people were shot during a demonstration. In a drought town, and as a result, they were rushed to the hospital emergency unit. Before this time, had you personally heard about any demonstration or any such uh, disturbances going on in the town? 
No, not really. Before the nurses told you that some persons have been brought as a result of this demonstration, have you heard that day that something of that sort was going on, some demonstration was going on? Yeah, I heard there was a demonstration in town. Before, in the afternoon, the nurses rushed to me with that report. So I quickly abandoned the operation and rushed to the emergency unit. Based on the narration, I thought that one needed an agent attention. Yeah, having got it to the place, I saw two young men, one by name Abdul Yusuf. age 25 years. Who was brought in dead? Which means he died before arrival. Yeah, and the other, the way too, the other person was also rushing. He was, he was gasping. That is having difficulty in breathing. And sweating profusely. So quickly on my examination of the first disease, that Abdul Yusuf, I realized as the reporters or the, uh, some of the demonstrators said that they were gunned down, I saw a gunshot injury at the left, at the back of the left upper chest. Penetrating into the chest. And also an injury at the left shoulder joint with the fracture of the humerus. The fracture of the humeral joint means the left arm joint was fractured or broken. Now, Doc, from, from what you saw of that, that patient who was then deceased, could you tell the committee where, uh, whether the person was shot from the front or the back, the, the exit and entry. Well, as narrated, the gunshot injury was at the back of the left upper chest. We have the chest, the upper, the middle, and the lower. So at the back of the left upper chest, at the region of the scapula, that the, the boom, the flat boom, and also another hitting the left humeral joint, leading to fracture of the humeral bone. The bone in the arm, the biggest bone in the arm, is that yeah, that one? Yeah, it's at the joint area, the shoulder joint, okay. somewhere there. Right. right. Please continue. So, he is passed, so I left him at the couch. We covered him, having seen the sort of injury he sustained. I quickly rushed to the second person. Earlier I said there were two. The second person, what I saw was also at the back 
at the middle part of the chest, the left area, there were also an injury, gunshot injury at the left, at the middle part of the chest. So, for that one too, for clarity's sake, where, in your estimation, was the entry point, the back or the front of the chest? The entry was at the uh, back. The back? Yes. He was also bleeding profusely as the first who passed. In fact, all the ashes were soaked in a pool of blood. I realized the second one was getting into shock. So quickly. He was getting into shock. He Please, was co collapsing. Okay. Gasping, sweating profusely with a very fast rate of pulse. It means, so we quickly resuscitated, giving enough fluid, ordering for blood and the necessary oxygen to be given in order to revive the client. Due to the profuse bleeding out, and I realized what was happening inside, inside the chest, he looked so pale, which obviously showed there was an internal bleeding. Very, very pale. Please continue. Yeah. While doing those resuscitation, the nurses on board, everybody running here and there, we lost the patient within 10 minutes of arrival. So there is an internal injury with internal bleeding, or internal organ damage precisely around the lung with internal bleeding which could not actually permit a survivor. So that one also passed we have to leave him and concentrate on the... Okay. And concentrate. Shortly, others were brought. I think two young ones were, were also brought. One is Luis. The other one, Awa, Miss Bao. Did you get to know their ages? Since you said they were young, I don't know about how, how their young. ages. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Awa, Miss Bao is 16 years. Louise, Ati, Atipa. She, he is uh, 19 years. Uh, our Miss Bao, both of them, they were all bleeding. But our Miss Bao was bleeding profusely from the thigh. The thigh. The femur bone. The thigh. Oh. The femur bone. He <laughs> sustained severe injury. At the femur bone towards the knee joint, precisely the right femur bone. Which is in ordinary parlance located in the thigh. That is the thigh boom. <laughs> Please continue. And the other one, the Louise, where was he? Yeah, yes. I haven't finished with that. A while. Sorry, okay. There were also multiple injuries at the muscles of the thigh of our. Actually, he was also, he also entered into shock. Profuse bleeding.
bleeding profusely, sweating, also looks very pale. So quickly, uh, the resuscitation team were on board, setting two IV lines, getting the infusion. giving him enough effusion, and also quickly we took blood, full blood count for grouping across match in order to know the blood group and also transfuse appropriately. So we did uh, best we packed and bandaged the awa, the one with the femur fracture, the thigh bone fracture. The fracture was located at the knee joint of the right femur, the knee joint of the right thigh. It was a multiple fracture. We splint the thigh. Splint means you bring a long board in order to actually prevent the broken bone from dangling. So, so Doc, tell us, uh, so for the treatment, eventually what, what did you do? Oh, treatment, yeah. resuscitation, that is the resuscitation. Resuscitation entails giving enough effusion. As the person bleeds, he loses a lot of uh, fluid and the blood as well. Did you give him any uh, stitches? Was he, come on, come was he operated upon? Was there any stitches? Stitches? Oh, we did. Okay. Yes. In order to secure hemostasis, or to prevent more bleeding, we did, we switched, we packed in order to secure hemostasis, that to prevent more bleeding. And finally, we spleen the thigh. After the X-ray of our Ms. Bao. So, with, all, with all due respect, we, we would have loved uh, to take the details, but we would want to just know um, he was brought in injured, and we, we want to know the path of injury. And then eventually, if you could tell us eventually uh, the, the, what happened to him, so that we'll move on to the next witness. Yeah, I think yeah. exactly that's what. Okay. So eventually, After was that, he still... We took an x-ray to know the extent of injury, where we realized, yeah, there were multiple fractures at the... Uh, right femur joint. There were multiple fractures at the right femur joint. And uh, based on the nature of the fracture, the following day, and we gave a lot of uh, you know, treatment in terms of IV antibiotics. The next day after assessing him, I referred him to. Uh, they preferred the counter, but when they got there, they also referred them to Confanoche Teaching Hospital. That's why he, about uh, our. And the Louise guy. Will you, okay, can I talk about the disease right before the Louise? Okay. The Louise also sustained an injury, a gunshot injury, at the right, above the, the uh, aliac crest, that is at the waist, just above the waist, the bone there, into the abdomen, precisely the pelvic region. When I probe into it, it went and opened at the aliac fossa region of the same abdomen. 
that the right Aliak Fusa region. <laughs> no, no, please help us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, sorry. Okay, you can give the medical terminologies okay. and then yeah. you come to the layman's. Okay, uh, that's the language I normally use. So yes. Yeah. Be because that, uh, that those typing I would may not even be able to type the correct spelling for us. Okay. So. I said you were shot at the back. Above the bone, the waist bone here, it entered and then came to the lower part of the pelvis. Here, around this place, this is what we call the aliac fossa. If it's the right side, we say right aliac fossa. And he was also having profuse bleeding. Due to the extent of bleeding, and when I probe into it, and where I saw the injury was actually going I knew internally they were more damaged than what we were seeing physically so quickly I also called for an ambulance and referred him that day but that of a while, he left the following day. But we resuscitated him very well. By God, we, all of them got to their destination. That is Kofano Chetichi Hospital. I know very well that one also we took an X-ray to that effect. The, at Kofano I know there will be more investigation before exploratory laparotomy could be carried on in. Now, were they the only two injured persons who were brought to your facility? Pardon? Were they the only two injured persons who were brought to your facility? No. Okay. How many more, if you can remember? In all, they were four, those who were injured. But the other two were not severe. So we treated and they are gone. Okay. they were gone. Okay. But however, we had so many uh, ladies or women of the diseased, about six, who also went into shock, they collapsed. Having heard that the, Were there relatives of both deceased or one of them? Were there Women of the two deceased or one of them? There were two deceased now. Yeah, there were two deceased. Okay, so both of them, they are family members. Yes, both okay. of them. In addition, okay. the real close relatives also followed. So we had six of them who collapsed. Okay. But God being so great, we resuscitated them. They were fine. And we discharged all of them. Okay. Apart from you patients, apart from your professional duties of treating these patients, can you tell the committee if anything unusual or anything else happened at the hospital that day because of this demonstration? Did, In the, the order? Yes, the committee have received some form of testimonies that there were a large crowd of people that trooped to the hospital that day and uh, Put pressure on such that you have to call the, in the police. You, you tried to call the police, but you couldn't get the police. And so you were forced to release. Was that the case? Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Yes. The crowd that came there was so huge. It wasn't easy. So, as usual, things are this nature is a national issue. And when it's happening like that, as a doctor, you have to take all the necessary precautionary measures and actually advise for the body to be kept at the monk for any further investigation. So after the death of the two, they came in and said they want to pick the body. 
I said, no, we don't do it like that. We have measures to take before actually releasing the body. But they realized I was delaying their time. And I said, oh, even for what happened, I have to call even the police. They will come, we both sit down, we will get the relative, write their name, and for possible transfer of the body to the mock, and we arrange for postmortem. It was then that, hey, they shouted that they would burn down the hospital if I try, and also our lives. They will actually was beat us very, very well, and even leading to death. I also started calling the police. Under that condition, they could also not come. And because of the agitation, release the body, release the body, quickly. And reluctantly, I have to release the body to preserve the hospital from being burnt and also save the life of my staff and myself. So I quickly released the body. Doc, the what, was it a demand for both bodies or just one body? For both. Because one died just 10 minutes after the one who died before they brought. Demand for both. And, and do you remember which, which of the police that you called? Police station, is it station officer, district commander, division officer? Yes. I called the, the crime officer also. I spoke to them and uh, yes. The crime officer of the station, the district or the division? Yes, of the station. The station. Yes. And uh, due to the, the crowd was really charged. And, uh, and when I mentioned the police, it was that it annoys them the more. So quickly, that's where they said, hey, doctor, give us our body. And uh, quickly, I have to release it. Okay. So as of now, you are, are you aware whether the bodies have been buried? Long ago. <laughs> long, long ago. Okay, so uh, do you have any more evidence or do you have any documentary evidence that you would want to produce to the committee? I think all the evidences I have, I gave it my write-up. My uh, medical report, I gave it to the police, which they submitted. As part the of honorable the... Citizens. Okay. Right. Okay. And uh, maybe it's some extras, but these ones. Thank you very much, Doc. The panel members will ask you some questions. Thank okay. you. Dr. Raza, again, welcome. Thank you. Yes, I believe with your experience, you have come into contact with gunshot wounds several times. Yes, can you tell us whether from the injuries that you saw on the two deceased persons, whether from the injury it was a close range shot? Yeah. What I can say uh, it wasn't so close like that. Okay. Can you help us? Do you think in your estimation it will be of about a distance of 50 meters, 20 meters, 30 meters, or uh, the distance? Looking at yes. the level of injury, you know, when somebody is shot from close range, you can easily determine yes. from the extent of injury and yes. penetration. Yes. Can you give us an idea as to? I can say I am not expert in not an expert um, and the distance, but what I know is that it was quite a distance. The, yes, quite a distance. Yes. Then also, 
Uh, you said the bullet penetrated from the back of the deceased person. From the way you saw the injury, would you say that the person who shot these two individuals was standing behind them or in front? No, you, uh, at a distance behind. At a he distance behind. behind. Yes. Well. And that of those who got injured but did not die. Uh, what is your view about the extent of the injury and the distance? Yes, I think almost the same. The same. Uh, yes. Thank you. Yes, uh, the youth, you said, came to the hospital demanded that you release the bodies. So, can you tell us whether the bullets were still to them? Thank you. That much, I may not be able to tell. The, survive, the surviving one, we took an X-ray. Okay. Those one, yes, if we had taken an X-ray, I would have been able to know the bullet. Some of the bullets are still in situ. Okay. But since we didn't take X-ray, I can't comment. So the surviving ones, did you find the bullets in the legs? Yes. Did you remove them? I referred them for cofanology specialists to undertake that. Oh, I did okay. It. Okay. Thank you. My other colleagues will ask us. Welcome, Doc, and congratulations. Thank you. I personally salute you for the efforts you made. Thank as you. any other medical officer would do, so I congratulate you. Thank you. Um, is that your first experience at such um, both crime and uh, injury? For injuries, uncountable, Edra. Injury every day, even today, in terms of RTA, multiple fractures, head injuries, dividing the uncountable. That's why we need to congratulate you. And bullets uncountable. Someone will be in the bush, then finally he's shot. And there's uncountable. That's why we need to congratulate you. Thank, thank you. Right. It's unfortunate we were unable to extract any of the bullets. Uh, we wanted to find out whether the type of bullet is a military bullet or somebody shot from the crowd. But you may not be able to answer that question because one, you are not a ballistic expert and two, you didn't extract any bullet. But tell me, uh, you were battling between your professionalism and the exigencies, the demand of the hour. If you hadn't re released the bodies, the hospital would not have been there. You yourself may not be alive today. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. But then, for criminal investigation, for rule of law, uh, we should have insisted on your professionalism. But as I said, you couldn't. Can you give the, um, the committee some kind of suggestion as to how we should curb this. Because it looks as though evidence has, is gone forever. Right. And people, it's like, it will happen and happen again. But we want to stop this. So, can you advise us a little uh, as to what we should tell government in such circumstances? Yes. Thank you. What I can say is that if a drug security or police were well resourced and trained very well, I think they will be able to contain and manage this thing peacefully. Because I realize even cars and all those is a problem to them. And the number of staff from discussion with the crime officer and the commander, they don't even have the staff, the number of staff, let and low come into the house, please. Because of that, and with 
maybe not having logistics. That's the reason why they could not even follow the crowd to that place for fear. So if they have the necessary logistics, I think they'll be able to manage peacefully without anything. And also the training should be well equipped so that next time they will manage things maybe higher than this, but without any casualty. They will save the doctor from. And I will be saved. <laughs> Do you think we need a legislation or, or application of existing legislation in matters like this? Where it, do you think we need a legislation if it's not there? Or if it is there, application of that legislation to forestall a situation where you have to release bodies, even though they are criminal uh, cases? Do you think we need a legislation in the country? Yes. If it is there, it ought to be enforced. By the enforcement, it means if you know that people will come and demand a body, then the training and the, how people should be well equipped to prevent that ought to be enforced. But if the legislation is not there, then it ought to be, you know, come to enforcement. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you so much. Doc, whilst you were there, were there any policemen who came around that time to try to talk to any of the victims? Perhaps before you referred them, for example. Thank you so much. Mm. I cannot, because at the time, the euphoria, everybody, you can't see well. So since I didn't see policemen entry the room, in fact, I cannot also say that maybe they were standing somewhere, but I didn't see any in the room. So, to the best of your knowledge, no policeman had arrived or CID to talk to the two injured persons. Yeah, I, I haven't seen left. any there. Okay. We are very grateful to you, Doc. Uh, we will make the necessary recommendations in respect of your concerns. Okay. Uh, we thank you. May the good Lord take you back to Ejura. Continue to serve Mother Ghana in that capacity. We all pray that we will get to the state that Ghanaians will understand that in such situation they should allow the medical personnel to do their lawful duties. Thank you. Yes, because uh, if we need justice to be done, Definitely, we don't have to uh, take away pieces of evidence that will help uh, justice delivery to be stored. We thank you. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you, too. I think uh, we were to take uh, the regional coordinator of national security. Uh, it appears he had some assignments somewhere, so he sought permission to leave. He'll be coming tomorrow morning. So as it is, uh, the committee stands adjourned to tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., for us to continue proceedings. We are grateful to our friends from the media. Thank you. So that was Dr. Mensa Manye, superintendent of the Idra Government Hospital, the second person to appear before the Justice George Kinsley Kumsin led committee of inquiry into the Idra killings. Interesting uh, testimony he gives there on the degree of injuries uh, he attended to as a result of the protest. He started by giving details of 
uh, the persons who lost their lives. The first, Abdul Yusuf, who's 25, was brought dead on arrival. Uh, we'll quickly uh, discuss some of the highlights of his testimony and then we'll quickly wrap it up here for today's uh, sitting. But Raymond, the, the, the interesting points to note were the questions about whether Dr. Mania could determine where the shots came from. Because we know that there's been claims that the shots may have come from the crowd uh, as against what the narrative is that it was shot or fired by the military. And to be clear, it's the commanding, not the commanding officer, the battalion officer who's actually been making that particular claim that it will not be out of thought to anybody to even conclude that some of the people who were in the crowd who shot to were having guns they make clear reference to pump action and also local manufactured guns could have been the ones who have killed their own colleague protesters so that's what they also created the impression on but if you hear what the doctor says he creates the impression that one the gun shots were not very close there was some distance between the people who shot the gun that entered the people and killed them so that that's one point the other point is that they said they also shot at the back so it would sound to me like, how am I moving away from you and you're shooting me? Ideally, your intent is to stop me from attacking you. And if you're convinced that by projecting myself in the direction that I may harm you, you need to stop me, the procedure has been that if you have to shoot at all, you go to maim. If you fail to maim, then it ends up where you did not want it to be because ideally you don't want to kill the protesters. Mm. Un unfortunately, how are you convinced that you could shoot somebody who's run away from you? Not, not that the person has attacked you. The person perhaps may have wanted to attack you, but did not do so. But decided to go the opposite direction. How? I mean, we need to establish that and all of that has not come out mm. yet. And mm. one of the things I'll be asking is, I've heard the military people say, they've not told us that Raymond and nine others were the ones on the ground. Each of them carried these ammunition and all of that. These two are the ones who we think might have shot in the direction that suggested that they have been the ones who killed it. Because the commanding officer spoke in a way that suggested that he knew more than just what was being given out there. Mm. For example, he said they did not shoot to kill. So that means he admitted his people shot the guns. Mm. Except that there was some doubt which was created by the warrant officer in this case. And I've already raised the confusion that comes out of that. Why is the military not having a single language or single story to tell? That's aside the point. The second point here is that all of them suggest a very unprepared team, ill-equipped team, and perhaps a poor judgment on the side of people mm. who are minded to shoot people who are running away from them. It's, it's interesting that you talk about uh, the well-equipped police because Dr. Mania, in ending his testimony, recommended uh, that the station be equipped, more training be given to personnel. His belief is that if the police were able to handle this, it may not have escalated. Uh, at this point, we'd like to say thank you to our audience on Joy Prime. Uh, we are ending it for you here. Uh, but quickly, Raymond, on the, on the bit of the relationship between the police and the, the youth of Ijura, as we highlighted during the MCE's testimony, it came to play here. Now, Dr. Mania in his testimony says, at the time that the, the people were demanding for the bodies of the dead. I made a call to the crime officer. Once they realized I was speaking to the police, or once the people heard me mentioning the police, they got more annoyed. Yes, because the events of the day have suggested to them that the police were not on their side. If, if the police and the people have a frosty relationship right from the beginning, there's broken trust. The decision to go to the cemetery, where they were doing the burial of their own, was problematic. The decision further to also chase them around and engage the way they engage them. Mm. And I've heard the original commander or deputy regional commander admit to some poor decision and judgment of what was supposed to be done. So that is understandable. There was already a very terrible relationship. So having to call the police, which is the right thing to do, might have ignited more trouble for the management of the health conditions there. Mm. My only sadness is that the, the insistence on the young people to take up people who have been prepared or probably been determined one way or the other in the hospital for burial. Mm.